I've never seen so many empty wine bottles. There'll be a few sore heads in that wedding party this morning. <laughs> there will. Thanks for helping to clear up, Pip. That's all right. I know the events one wasn't on your list of things to do today. Well, I don't think any of us expected there to be this much to clear up. And you still okay to help with the bed and breakfast laundry later, Pip? Ah, oh, damn. So I completely forgot about that. I know it's supposed to be Ben's job, but I was really pleased when he said he was going out. Mm. Yeah. It's good to see him going out with his friends again. He really is. So it's still okay, Pip? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I wouldn't ask unless we really needed your no, help. I said it's fine. Right, I'll just take these bottles out then. <coughs> we can finish up here, Ruth. Are you sure? Yeah. Thanks. I'll see you later then, Pip. Yeah, Mum, I said I'd be there. Okay. Oh, it's a good job Kenton saved the day with the wine. Yeah. It really helped us out. How about you fold? Uh, oh. Best turn it upside down first. Uh, yeah, I think I can manage a table, Dad. And Toby saved us a lot of time looking for a wine supplier for our other events. Yeah. That's a great deal he's offered us. Do you think it'll be a long-term thing? I have absolutely no idea. Is it better if you asked him, or, or should I? I really don't think it'll make any difference. He seems to have come into his own in this new job. Stupid thing. Hey, let me help. Right, you hold it steady, I'll try and push the legs down. That's it. Starting to budge now. Ow! Ow! You're right. Did you catch your finger? Let me see. Oh, no, I'm all right. It's bleeding. It's fine. It's fine. It's, oh, it's just a nick. Let me see. Mm, honestly, Dad, it's nothing. Could have taken your finger off. I am not five years old. I know you're not. <sighs> Sorry. Is everything okay, Pip? Yeah. You've been doing too much lately, haven't you? I've said I'm fine. It's a shame you can't take a break with Rosie and Toby. Mm. I mean, if you wanted to join them for a couple of days, I'm sure we could sort something out. Will you please just stop going on about Toby? <sighs> OK. OK, but we do need to get something on that finger. Oh, you can't just throw things anywhere. You've got to make it into a display, Tracy. It's a car boot sale. You're selling things from the boot of your car and not creating a fancy shop window. Oh, if we don't stand out, no one will ever come over. And I'm not going home with all this rubbish after I've spent so much time clearing it out. Oh, I like a good clear out. Yeah, well, the house feels so much better without all this clutter. Hey, uh, where do you want these necklaces? Um, put them over the T-shirts. Oh, but do it carefully, not just dumped on top. We could do a deal. If they buy the necklace with the T-shirt, they get a discount. That's exactly what I was thinking. Oh, it's good to be outside, though, and get a bit of fresh air. After all the tension at the dairy. Oh, I can't believe that Rob Titchener is back in the country and been bothering her again. Mm. Poor Ellen. What a mess. And as for that video George posted... Yes, well, that's been dealt with. Anyway, enough about other people's worries. Are you all set for Wednesday? I think so. You think so? I've double-checked the booking is confirmed at the register office. Is that all you've done? What else is there to do? It's your wedding day, Tracy. You've already had the wedding. It's just the getting married bit now. And you haven't made a list? We've just got to turn up, say our vows and hope no-one sees us. <laughs> I think there's a bit more to organise than that. What do you mean? I think we'd better start making a list of things that need doing. Don't you? <sighs> Mum won't be happy you've used the wedding party napkins to mop up my blood. <laughs> I won't tell her if you won't. <laughs> well, it looks like it's stopped bleeding now. I think you live. Thanks, Dad. I don't like to see you like this. <laughs> I've only cut my finger. I don't mean your finger. Just leave it, Dad. If Toby has hurt you, I need to know. He hasn't. I've hurt him. Oh, right. Yeah, I've made a complete mess of things. Oh, well, OK. Dads are always there to sort out messes. <sighs> Not this one. It's my job to try. I led Toby on. OK. And now I've embarrassed you. No, you haven't. No, you interrupted us on Friday when I was telling him it wasn't going to happen again. I see. It it's, um, 
it's not just that we, um, we you know, he'll get over um, it. Well, but I've got feelings for someone else. Oh, I see. Mm. Uh, yep, that makes things more complicated, mm. but not impossible. I used him. Like, I used Toby and played with his feelings. He didn't deserve that. The main thing is you've done the right thing and not let him believe there's a future for you two. Oh, no, I just feel so bad. Does this other person know about the um, incident, oh. with Toby? <laughs> no, no, it's, um, it's all much more complicated than that. <laughs> they don't feel the same way you do? Well, I might have messed it up there as well. So he doesn't know how you feel? Um, but they think I'm an idiot, or at least I'm pretty sure they do, and they'd be right. And things get awkward, and then I go and make it a thousand times worse by, you know, with my ex, and how dumb is that? It's not dumb. Mm. These things happen. Life can be <sighs> tricky. Mm. I mean, look at me. I'm forever getting it wrong, and me and your mother are still together despite everything. Mm. Look. Does this other bloke know how you feel? How you really feel? He's a she, Dad. Oh! Mm, I told you I was confused. Oh, oh, I had no idea that you... you had feelings for women in that way. I mean, I, I didn't know you were gay. I, I don't know what I am, Dad. I'm sorry, that came out wrong. I, I mean... It's OK, Dad. <sighs> just took me a bit by surprise, that's all. I told you, um all over the place. Yeah, well... I, I shouldn't have told you like that. I, oh, I'm glad you did. No, I'm doing everything wrong, aren't I? Oh, love, I'm not doing anything wrong. Oh, it feels like I am. But you're not. <laughs> am I? What? Doing anything wrong? Dad! So she doesn't know that you have feelings for her? Uh, no. No, I, no, I don't know. I, no. So maybe the first thing is to tell her how you feel. Find out if she feels the same. That's another two quid in the kitty. He only wanted to pay one, but I pushed him up. Susan, I said I just doubled that last sale. Oh, well done. And what shall we do about rings? On the day, who's going to look after those? We're already wearing them. And I told you, we're just going to turn up at the register office and that's that. Well, you'd better take them off before. Bigamy cannot be the reason you don't get married on the second attempt. Oh, Susan. Rings to chips. Or is it best to give them to Brad? Who do you think's the most responsible? We can just take them off and give them to each other when we're inside. And what have you done about the cake? We already cut the cake at the reception. But you weren't married then. We can't spend money on another one. It's tradition. I am not wasting money on something we've already done. I have to say, Tracy, you've left it all a bit late. I suppose I could ask Emma if there's a cake that hadn't sold at the tea room on Tuesday night. At a discount. And the outfits? We were just going to wear our normal clothes. I'm not having my sister getting married in a pair of leggings. Well... We can just wear the same clothes as last time. Although, I have spilt something down the dress. Oh, I can try and get that out for you. Look, Susan, we just want it really simple. And flowers, have you thought about those? That would really give the game away if I went and bought a wedding bouquet. I wish you'd told me earlier that you'd done nothing. I've done nothing because there's nothing to do. Problem with you, Tracy, is that you don't think you deserve nice things. People would think I was a bit odd if they saw me parading around in my wedding dress weeks after I got married. Come on, we're packing up. I'm going to help you sort everything out. What are you going to do with all your things? No, oh, we can drop the boxes off at your house. Have a look through in case you want anything, and if not, we'll take them to a charity shop. <laughs> No-one wants to buy any of this tat anyway. Just drop those sheets on the table for now. I'm sorry I didn't get here earlier. That's OK. I don't usually forget things. Why don't you go and have an early night? I mean, your dad can finish sorting these. Are you sure? I feel I've already let you down by not getting here earlier. You haven't let anyone down. And we can sort out a couple of mornings where you don't have to do the milking. Now Rosie's away for the week. Have a few lions? I could really do with that. <laughs> Thanks. Now off you go, before I change my mind. 
She can stay if she wants to, Ruth. Of course she can. But if I were you, Pip, I'd take a break when it's offered. What? I'm already gone. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. It's not like Pip to forget things. No, it isn't. There's something more going on. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure she would have told me about Toby if that was the only thing bothering her. Well, I told you there's the other person as well. I know. But why wouldn't she talk to me about it? Best to let her work it out for herself. Oh, it's bugging me, David. She's not right. Don't you think there's something else? Well... Well... You know something else, don't you? No. Don't lie to me, David. You know something and you're not telling me. I think it might be best if she tells you herself. But tells me what? I just think she'll tell you when she's ready. You're worrying me now, David. Look, I only told you about Toby because you would have guessed anyway. Oh, it was clear as day something was going on. She could barely look at him on Friday. But this other thing, if it's troubling Pip, then I need to know. We missed the signs with Ben and look what happened. Look, um... I'm struggling to find the right words. David, just spit it out. It's this other person that she has feelings for. She hasn't got herself involved with a married man, has she? No, it's nothing like that. Well, what is it then? David? Well, the other person she has feelings for is a woman. Right. Well, that's okay. You, you did tell her that was okay, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, of course I did. And she told you not to tell me? Well, no, she didn't, but I don't want her to feel that she can't confide in me. Well, I'm glad she did. Yeah, but what if she's angry that I've told you? Well, the main thing is we know what's troubling her. I don't know if I handled it right. I'm sure you did. Well, what if I didn't? Oh, she opened up to you, so you must have handled it OK. You think so? David, you're a wonderful dad. Oh, bless her. That's what's been eating away at her this whole time. I know. In a way, I'm just relieved it's not Toby. How do you mean? He's been great lately, and he's a fantastic dad. But I think Pip needs someone she really gels with. And although this must be hard for her to get her head around, it must be someone pretty great if she's this mixed up about them. Is everything still okay for Wednesday, Neil? Oh, yeah. Can't say it'll be easy without you here, but yes, of course. Just make sure you actually get married this time, will you? Don't worry about that. Your Susan will see you. Yeah, that she will. <laughs> uh, I can still keep it yours tomorrow night. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Cheers. Tracy's getting really superstitious that something bad's going to happen if we see each other before the wedding. Well, she might have a point, considering what happened last time. <clears throat> <clears throat> Kettle's boiled, Hannah. Oh, thanks. Anyone else want one? Uh, no, I'm fine, thanks. Um, you know. I think we need to dig a new wallow. Yeah, you're right. It's so hard keeping the pigs cool in this weather, isn't it? Yeah. Everything seems hard at the moment. Uh, uh, anything I can help with? Not unless you've got a house you want to rent to me. Still need joy, yeah? Uh, I think I've run out of options. Well, Tracy's asked at Brookfield. Ah, uh, but they're closing the bed and breakfast. Oh, uh, that's right. I saw Ruth this morning looking frantic trying to get supplies. Says she'll be glad when they stop. Besides, a bed and breakfast isn't really a home, is it? No, that's true. But it was good of Tracy to ask for me. There's really nothing about? Not a thing. And the few that there are are so pricey. I earn enough. Well, I thought I earned enough to live OK, but I've never known it like this. If I can't find anywhere soon, the only option might be to move closer to Mum. Or move in with her. That'd be a hellier commute. I wouldn't be able to, the hours we work. Mum needs a lot more care now, though. She doesn't really go out the house unless I take her. You'd leave better. Well, I might not have an option. There must be something we can do. Unless you're a secret millionaire with an empty property going spare. I don't think there is. Well, you can always keep on her sofa. Thanks. Oh, I'll put up a tent in the garden. Just <laughs> You could have my bed if it comes to that. <laughs> oh, I think Tracy might have something to say about that. <laughs> she might, but Hannah knows what I mean. If she needs somewhere, then she knows where we are. Mm. Honestly, weeks, months, you can always stay at hers. Well, I hope it doesn't come to that, but to be honest, the way things are looking at the moment, I might just have to take you up on it. Good 
it doesn't matter what cake it is. Jasmine will eat anything. I wasn't going to bother, but Susan is determined we cut a cake. Well, let's hope it's not just muffins we've got left over at the end of tomorrow. Well, muffins would be fine by me. Oh, Tracy, I am sorry we can't do you one special. I hate the thought of you having one that's left over. But we've already had our cake <laughs> and eaten it. <laughs> Honestly, Emma, whatever you've got going at the end of the day is fine by me. I bet you're pleased Fallon's back from her holiday. Oh, I was run off my feet while she was away. And all that drama with Helen. Oh, Tracy, it's been awful. Watching her go for George like that. Mm, that can't have been nice. No, but then he went and humiliated her with that stupid video. I sat him down last week and I gave him what for. Did he apologise? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I... Yeah, I think so. I mean, it sounded like he understood what he'd done wrong, but I... I don't know. I don't know if he really heard me. Oh, I'm sure he did. And if he didn't? Then you give him what for again, and again, until he listens. Yeah, you make it sound so simple. No, I don't mean to. It's the hardest thing in the world, kids. We both know that. Yeah. Thanks, Trait. Anyway, Fallon can deal with any tea room dramas <laughs> this week. Yeah, exactly. I was landed with all the stress and none of the rewards. You know what? You should apply for one of them jobs at Grey Gables. Oliver was telling me about it last week. No, I don't want just another job. Head of housekeeping ain't just another job. Head of housekeeping. And there's a nice salary that goes with it. Yeah, but head of housekeeping. I ain't never been head of anything before. But you just have. Just this last week. <laughs> Covering while Fallon's off, so hardly being the boss. Yes, it is. It's exactly that. I never worked in a hotel before, neither. You'd be perfect, honest. Would I? You worked in hospitality. The bull. It's hardly Grey Gables, is it? There's a bar at Grey Gables. And you can keep a house. Well, I can't put that on an application form. You cleaned Peggy's house for years. Well, I know I can clean and pull a pint, but head of housekeeping, that'd be managing people, making decisions, budgets. And don't you do all that stuff every day of your life? Well, yeah, I suppose. But we all do when you've got a family. Emma, you pretty much helped Fallon set up this place. You trained staff, got a really good relationship going with Bridge Farm and helped make a success of it. Yeah, I have, haven't I? Mm. Even Natasha said I needed to believe in myself more. See? So isn't it about time you got something back in return? <coughs> oh, our deal's come in. You can ask him about it. I can't do that. Morning. Oh, don't mind me, our deal. I'm not in the queue. What can I get you? Just a cappuccino, please. Do you want chocolate on the top? Always. <laughs> Emma will bring it over to you when it's ready. Why don't you grab that lovely table over there? Right, thank you. Go and have a word with him. I can. You can. Make sure you put extra chocolate on top and tell him you're thinking about putting in an application. Hannah, do you want me to ask Jazza to fetch the digger for the wallow? It's OK, I can get it. Oh. I was just working out where to lay it. Ah, oh, the far corner above the arcs? Yeah, exactly my thinking. Oh, great minds. Yeah. Uh I'm really sorry things are so difficult for you at the moment. I wish there was something more I could do to help. Thanks, Neil. But the way rentals are right now, I'm not holding my breath. Uh, I was surprised when Will said he was evicting you. It's his house at the end of the day. Mm, uh, I suppose. But all the nonsense with George. Oh, I'm sorry, Hannah. Well, you've got nothing to be sorry for. Well, I have in a way, though. If I haven't sacked him, then well, you That's would... on him, not you. Well, yes, yeah. If George had just behaved himself, then he wouldn't have had a bust up with his parents and wouldn't be needed to move in with his dad. So, oh, what I'm trying to say is I'm sorry that you've ended up having to suffer from the fallout of it all. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate that, but instead of crying over spilt milk, I need to focus on finding somewhere to live. Yeah. Here is one cappuccino with extra chocolate. Mm. All this special treatment. Just looking after our regular customers. That's very <laughs> kind. Thank you. <laughs> and I've heard that you're looking for a head of housekeeping at Grey Gables? Yes, and there'll be more jobs advertised in short order. I'm actually thinking of putting in an application. That's great. Well, <laughs> all the information is on the website. I've got a wide range of experience, not just the tea room. Although, I did actually help set the place up. Did you know that? You certainly do a great job here. Mm. And I've got years of experience of housekeeping at various venues. Oh, that all sounds really useful. Uh, the website should have all the information you need, though. 
as well as lots of connections locally through my years in the hospitality industry. The Bull, Lower Loxley. That's very impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I'm looking for the next challenge, you see. Well, if you think you meet the criteria, then we look forward to receiving an application from you. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Is it an application form or a CV that you need me to send? As I said, if you just go to the website, you'll find all the information you need. Right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Can I get you a cake or something to go with a cappuccino? This is fine on its own, thank you. I really need to get on with a few things. Okay. Well, if you need anything, just uh, give me a little wave. There you go then, Hannah. One pint of cider. Nothing beats it in hot weather. Card? Uh, yeah. Oh, just tap here. Jazzer says the same after a long hot day at Barrow. We've shared a few pints of cider over the years. <laughs> I bet you have. I'd miss that if I left. Oh. Did Jazzer tell you I've been asking round to try and find you somewhere to live? Yes, he did. Thanks. He doesn't want to lose you. Well, we make a good team. I was lost without him when he did in his ankle. I'll keep an ear out. You hear of all sorts working in here. <laughs> Thanks, Tracy. You and Jazzer have been diamond. Oh, it's nothing. It's not nothing. Giving up your sofa, sharing your space with another person. You're a lifesaver, the both of you. Sharing our what now? <laughs> Jazz is so funny. He even said you could put a tent up in the garden for me. Oh, he's a hoot. So, the sofa. You're planning on staying with us then? Well, I'm hoping it won't come to that. Right. But just knowing I can crash at yours for a few weeks. A few weeks? It's such a relief to know that I've got that safety net. He even said he'd give up his bed. Jazz said what? I was watching that. With your eyes closed. <laughs> you got me there. Enjoy the cider. I'll clear up in a minute. Hannah came in the bull earlier for a cider. Hannah really could drink his eye under the table. She said you'd had a few sessions together over the years. <laughs> Did we have? Oh, maybe you can start a club when she moves in. <laughs> moves in? Hannah said you were trying to help her find somewhere to kip down. Oh, aye. You okay, Trace? She obviously likes working with you. Ah, well, you've got to get on when you're rolling around in a pig's wallow. Do you do that a lot? What? Roll around together in a pig's wallow. What are you on about, Trace? Don't you think you should have checked with me before offering Hannah our house? I didn't offer her our house. I said you could keep on the sofa. Still, you should have asked me first. Well, I thought you wouldn't mind. It's just our sofa. But it wasn't just our sofa, was it? Our garden, our bed. Oh, that was just a joke. Yeah, great joke, Jazzer. One of your finest. <sighs> Honestly, didn't he think it'd be a problem? How could you not see it would be a problem? The house is rammed as it is, and you know Dad likes to take over the living room. And the kids! What if they have mates over? And me? What about when I get home from a late shift at the Bull and want to put me feet up? I should try to be thoughtful. Not to me, you weren't. Not to the kids or Dad, you weren't. OK, OK, I should never have offered. She probably wouldn't need it anyway. It's just, she's got hardly any mates here, and me and her, we've been through a lot together, and... She never makes it awkward, so I just thought she could do a better looking after. Sorry, what? What doesn't she make awkward? No, I mean, no, she just, she just, you know... No, I don't know. If you don't tell me, how am I supposed to know? Oh, I had that stupid crush, you know, when I was younger, that's all. And why are you telling me this now? <laughs> I honestly don't know. You just kept pushing. Well, it's obviously important to you, otherwise you wouldn't have brought it up. I wish I hadn't, you knew. So you've been trying to hide this from me? No, you just told me to tell you. If I'm only just finding out about this now, then what else is there to come out? Tracy, stop. There's nothing to come out. Why haven't you told me about it before? Why have I not told you that I might have asked another woman out for a drink years before we even knew each other? The woman you've been trying to find a place to live in case she leaves the village. I'm not going to see a pal out in the street. And you've got me asking everyone if they've got a room for her. You only asked at Brookfield. Does everyone else know about your crush? <sighs> that was years ago. They must think I'm a right mug, laughing behind my back. Nobody's laughing behind your back. Look at her. Jazzer's got her making sure his other woman stays close by. We're getting married on Wednesday. Are we? Aye, we are. I wonder what else there is from your past that I don't know about. Oh, Tracy. Or were you waiting until we were married before telling me everything? We're supposed to be married already. It's a good job we're not. Oh, you don't mean that. I do. I've had enough of this. I'm going to go to bed. In my bed. Why don't you test out the sofa for Hannah, since she's going to be spending so much time here? Can 
you did me another tea, Trace. I hardly got any sleep last night. Why did you sleep on the sofa? You better ask your mother. Jazzer thinks the sofa is very comfortable, Brad. And you can tell your mother that Jazzer's got a sore back for sleeping on the sofa. Why didn't you sleep in your bed? Your guess is as good as mine, Brad. You can tell Jazzer that he knows exactly why you spend the night on the sofa. And you can tell your mother that Jazzer will be digging out wallows with a sore back all day now. Oh, typical. Didn't take you long to get the conversation around to wallowing with pigs. Why are you both acting weird? Don't bother yourself with it, Brad. Oh, that's right, Jazzer. Don't bother yourself with what's really going on. What is going on? It's just something your mother's getting to your heat. Oh, is that right? It's all in my head, is it? All in my heat. Oh, just pass me the tea, Tracy, yeah? It's going to be a long day. Tell Jazzer he can get his own tea. You really want me to do that? Look, oh, I'll get my own tea. <laughs> ah! Why hasn't he to move that box? If you can remind Jazzer that I asked him to move the box. And if you can tell your mother that you're supposed to sell stuff at a car boot sale and not bring all this rubbish back home. You nearly knocked the leg off the table altogether, then. Can you also remind Jazzer that I've been asking him to fix the leg on that table for months? I'm surprised we didn't get more applications than this. Oh, I don't know, Ardell. I'm sure we have enough good candidates to invite to interview. Just about. But what are we going to do about Emma Grundy? She doesn't have what we're looking for. She has a lot of potential, though. We don't have the luxury of training people for six months so they can realise their potential. Well, I'd like to give her an interview, at the very least. Why? It will be good experience for her. You have to take the emotion out of recruitment, Oliver. I thought you would have learned that by now. I'm not being sentimental. I really think she's got something. You're wasting your time. Time we haven't got. Well, it feels wrong to dismiss her just because she's lacking experience. We must be sensitive to the mood in the village. There are other roles she could apply for. Like what? We'll soon be advertising for the domestic services assistant posts. We could guarantee her an interview for that if she put in an application. Well, isn't there anything else we can offer? Emma Grundy's got a lot going for her. I'm afraid not, Oliver. Now, here's a list of the interview questions I've prepared in advance. So how was I supposed to fix the table when I had a broken ankle? Always an excuse with you, isn't there? No, 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 come on. You tell me how I was supposed to do it. The table was broken long before the ankle was. Because I just sit around here all day doing nothing, is that it? Oh, here we go. I work so hard at Barrow all day. You haven't got a clue what it's like working with pigs. No, but we both know who does have a clue. Oh, come on, Trace. Too tired to fix a table leg, but not too tired to offer out our bed to other women. Oh, you two give it a rest. So I'm not supposed to help but a mate now, eh? Is that the sort of man you want to marry? Somebody who just walks on by when somebody else is doing on the luck? Is he? Are you really trying to lecture me on what it's like to be down on your luck? Because I can tell you, I know exactly what it's like to be down on my luck. And I don't. What I don't do, though, when I'm down on my luck, is rely on someone else's husband to offer me a place to lay my head. Will you both shut up? There are things you don't understand here, Brad. Why are you behaving like a couple of kids? Jazzer's the only one behaving like a kid by not taking responsibility for his actions. Is that right? Is it? I've had enough of this. You deserve each other. I'm going to see Mia. Let me know when you've decided to grow up. Well, that's you told. Me? I think you'll find you're the one doing all our heads in. I'm sorry, Oliver. Racing round everywhere and not looking at what's in front of me. Oh, seems there's a lot of racing around today. I've just bumped into Helen Archer on a run. As if she's going for an Olympic gold. I'm glad I've seen you, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I, I put in an application for a job at Grey Gables. Oh, right. I know I shouldn't ask. I'm really not trying to put you in an awkward position. Well... And I, I know the deadline was only last night, but I wondered if you wouldn't mind putting in a good word for me. Well, that might be a bit tricky. I'm not See, expecting I... any special treatment. I just mean, like, a quiet word. You know, that, like, I'm a hard worker and I like to get involved with the community, that sort of thing. This job just... just feels right. Did you know that it'll be part of the Grey Gables management team? Mm. And I'm That's why I applied. Sure. I'm ready for that next step up. I've been managing the tea room recently and I've trained people. And it'll be much better having one job as well instead of trying to juggle two. So it was more about the post being a full-time position rather than the actual role itself? I know, it's the head of housekeeping that I want. 
I mean, I know I've got to be interviewed and I know nothing's guaranteed. Emma, Ardell and I have been shortlisting for that post this morning. Oh, I know I should have spoken to you last night. And I'm really sorry, Emma, but on this occasion we won't be inviting you for interview. Oh, right, I see. Competition was incredibly fierce, I'm afraid. Was it? Uh, and because it's such an important position, we felt it would be better to have someone who already has managerial experience to begin with. Didn't you read my CV? Yes, but unfortunately you didn't score highly enough. Didn't I? But we do feel you'd be a great addition to the team. Uh, and there is another position that we'd very much like you to consider applying for. Mm, I really wanted this one. I understand you must be disappointed. But I don't understand why I haven't even got an interview. The other candidates just had more direct management experience. But I thought I demonstrated that I did. I know, but running a hotel and running a family aren't entirely comparable. I am sorry, Emma. As I said, it was a highly competitive field, and lots of them had extensive qualifications, probably overqualified, and that made the difference in the end. Right. So I'll, I'll never get an interview unless I get more qualifications. No, I'm not saying that. But there are other positions still available, and, and if you applied, we'd certainly guarantee you an interview. What positions? Domestic services assistant. Domestic services assistant. A full-time position with sick pay and holiday entitlement. A cleaner. So I score high enough to clean up other people's muck, do I? Look, watch where you step, Brad. What are you doing? Going through Susan's box from the car boot sale. That pile over there is to keep, and the other one can go to the charity shop. Well, aren't you supposed to be at the bowl? Emma's covering my shift. Are you ill? I'm supposed to be getting stuff sorted for the wedding tomorrow. Why aren't you then? <laughs> this lot needs organising. Right now? No one else is going to do it. Are you all right? Yes, I'm fine, Brad. You're not, though, Mum. I will be, though, so don't look so concerned, love. Really, it's nothing. You and Jazza never fight. Well, no, you do all the time, but not like that. It... I'm sorry. We shouldn't have lost our rag in front of you. It, it wasn't fair. You do know all this is nonsense, don't you? I know. That's why we couldn't sell it. Oh, not the car boot junk. What, what you two are doing to each other. He loves you, Mum, and you love him. There's not much else to it, so whatever he's done, or you think he's done... Oh, he's done, all right. Mum, stop it. Stop what? Looking for holes where there ain't none. Do you honestly think Jazza would do anything to hurt you? No, of course not. But when you get to our age, it ain't always easy to stop thinking a certain way. And maybe I've taken my eye off the ball a bit. But you just said he'd never hurt you. He wouldn't, but we've got baggage, see, and you're... Baggage builds up year after year. I thought Jazza knew all of mine, and I thought I knew all of his. So, this baggage, does it mean that you don't trust him anymore? No. Does it mean that he's not a good person? No. So, really, it ain't nothing but some old boxes stuffed with rubbish, like this one here. <laughs> Brad, where did you come from? I, I just want to see you happy, Mum. You're so... you're so lovely. Oh, you're right. You're right. Jazzer's nothing like my dad. I know. Oh, speak of the devil. It's Jazzer. He wants to know if I want him to bring some chips later. <laughs> See? And after making him sleep on a sofa and all. If that's not love, then what is? I told you it would be quieter in here, Ardell. I don't know how you can hear yourself think with all that drilling and banging at Grey Gables. It should all be finished soon. Those contractors aren't exactly rushing themselves, are they? But at least we can go over the plans for reopening over dinner, and more importantly, in peace. Yes, I suppose. You have to eat, Ardell. The hours you're putting in, you need to keep your strength up. Sorry to keep you waiting. What can I get you both? Hello, Emma. Hi, Dill. Hi, Oliver. Hi. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to apply for the post of Head of Housekeeping. I've spoken to Emma already, I do. Well, then I'm sure Oliver has told you that we were very impressed by your application, but other candidates had more relevant experience for this particular post. Emma knows about the decision. Yeah, my experience was a bit left field, wasn't it? Well, yes, I suppose it was. Hmm. Uh, but I, we, both very much hope that it won't put you off from wanting to apply for more suitable roles at Grey Gables. And there's actually a different role that we'd... Uh, Emma has all the details, Argyll, so uh, uh, why don't you grab that table in the corner before someone else does? Uh, I'll bring the menus over. Ah, yes, OK. And I hope Oliver has also said that we'd guarantee you an interview for the other post. Yeah, he has. Well, we look forward to receiving your application. Sorry about that, Emma. No need to apologise. Uh, I'm glad to see you. Uh, I'm not interested in the domestic services assistant post. I know you're not. And I've been feeling bad about our misunderstanding all day. Well, there wasn't a misunderstanding. Well, my insensitivity, then. <sighs> I want you to accept my apologies. I do understand that you were applying for the position for a step up the career ladder. You don't have to apologise. You've actually helped me. How? I spend so much time clearing up after other people. I've decided to do something for me. Well, that sounds wonderful. May I be a little intrusive and ask <laughs> what you're planning to do? I'm going to go back to college. Get them qualifications I don't have. Well, that sounds like an excellent idea. You shouldn't have bought a fish as well. I've got sausages in the fridge. <laughs> I thought we needed something to cheer us up. Oh, I haven't had fish and chips for ages. You, you do know there's nothing going on, don't you? No. Oh, no. And you know there'll never be anything going on. I oh, know. And you, you know I love you, didn't you? I know. Then don't waste that fish. <laughs> Brad gave me a talking to earlier. When did he get so grown up? I was actually taken aback. He was he was so blinking sensible. Made me feel like I was being a right teenager. <laughs> well, you weren't. Mm. I should have checked with you first. I spoke to Hannah the other day and it turns out she's got other places to stay if she needs... You shouldn't have done that. I feel bad now. No, don't. It's my fault you were right. We've got a full house and I've got the kids and Bertie think you know and all. Thanks. There's some mushy peas there as well. Oh, my favourite. <laughs> I know we said you'd stay at Susan's before the wedding, but I think I'd like you to stay here with me. I'd like that, I know. <laughs> what if I just sneak out in the morning before you wake up? Well, it doesn't say anything about seeing the groom the night before the wedding, does it? <laughs> Here's to wedding number two. <laughs> I don't believe this is happening. It's because you saw me this morning. Oh, that's just an old wife's tale. Then tell me why, for the second time, we're not getting married, Jazzer. I think we have to take some responsibility for the first time, Tracy, but this? Who'd have thought the guy marrying is to pull a sickie? They said it was a family emergency. Anyway, that's why I wanted to make sure we didn't tempt fate this time. All you had to do was go round to Susan's before I got up. Just the one thing. You can't blame me for this. You knew how important it was that you didn't see me. I've said sorry. All you had to do was not look at me. That's a bit hard in a register office. It's not like you're being walked down the aisle in a veil, Mum. Yeah, and was he supposed to close his eyes when he was driving us all here mm. as well? No, I'm glad everyone is having a good laugh at my expense. Oh, nobody's doing that, Tracy, but... No seen each other before the wedding wouldn't he have avoided this mess. What else could it be then? Well, it says here that the groom shouldn't see the bride before the wedding in case they change their mind and think she's too ugly to marry. Chelsea, <gasps> put your phone away, Chelsea. Why couldn't things just go right? Tracy, whatever you do, don't move. Why? Just uh, stay where you are. That's it. Go to it. What was it? There was a spider climbing up your dress. Oh, that's a good sign. What do you mean? Well, I'm sure I read something about a spider on a wedding dress being a good omen for a successful marriage. There you are then, Tracy. But not if no one marries you. That proves it didn't matter that Jazza saw you this morning, then. I just want to go home. Oh, I didn't think I was going to make it in time. Jim called first thing to say he couldn't open up the shop, and then Linda kept me there, asking why she'd seen you lot piling into the Riley with Tracy all dressed up. And you could have at least sent a text, Jazzer, to say you weren't staying over last night. Mm. Nearly forgot your suit altogether and had to race back to pick it up. you better get changed in the toilets quickly. What's the matter? Why are you all just staring at me as if I've just walked in stark naked? What's happened? Tracy? I'm not getting married. What? 
After all the trouble I've gone to these last few days, I can tell you that you are. I've got your cake here, and look at your bouquet. Oh, it's beautiful. So, whatever disagreement you've had, I don't want to hear about it. Just get yourself changed, Jazza, and then get yourselves into that room. The canny marry us, Susan. What? The registrar's at a family emergency and can he make it. They can't do that. They can, and they have. And you're just going to sit there looking defeated and accept it? Somebody could have died. It'll be me registering a death if you two don't get married. It's all because Jazza saw me before the wedding. I knew we were tempting fate. Oh, pull yourselves together. Now, Chelsea and Brad, you need to go back in there and not leave till this is sorted out. They can't just cancel a wedding. What can we do? I don't care. But between you, you'll just have to work it out. Come on, Brad, we can sort this. That's more like it. And you two can clean yourselves up. Jasso, go and make yourself presentable for your own wedding. And Tracy, let's get that face sorted. Hello. Oh, sorry, Linda. <laughs> I was just finishing my break. Oh, and enjoying a good book from what I could see. Oh, my mum had a clear out last week and I took a few of her old books. Hmm. You don't have to apologise to me for being transported into another world by literature. Well, I'd forgotten how much I like reading. Mm. Mum used to buy second-hand paperbacks when I was a little girl and I'd read whatever she brought into the house. And then I'd discover boys. <laughs> Yes, yes, that other great transporter into another world. I've decided to go back to college and get my GCSE English Literature. Oh, that is wonderful <laughs> news. Good for you, Emma. Thanks, Linda. And of course, I'll always be on hand if you have any questions. There aren't many books I haven't grappled with over the years. That's really kind of you. I'm really looking forward to getting my teeth into something, you know? <laughs> Indeed, when it comes to sinister tales... You need look no further than Ambridge, I hear. What do you mean? Rob Titchener, finding his way back to the village. And that awful to do with Helen and your George. Yeah. Hmm. Are we any closer to discovering why that horrible man has made a return? I guess it's something to do with Helen's boys. I wonder why now, though. Well, I hope they sort it out soon. Mum said Helen's all over the place at work. Oh, dear. And after all these years, it, it's a mystery. I've told George to stay out of it. Anyway, what can I get you? Oh, I'm going to treat myself to a latte and a slice of that wonderful-looking carrot cake mm. after my long walk first thing. I saw your mother as she was opening up the shop. She was looking very smart. Tracy, too, this morning. Do you want cream on top of your cake? Uh, well, well, as a special treat to myself, I think I do, please. And can I ask what it was you were reading back there? Oh, don't look now. One of Daphne du Maurier's finest. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit scary. Oh, I know, but such a skilful writer. But where have you got to? Oh, I've just got a few pages left. The psychic sister's just gone into a trance. <gasps> oh, don't tell me what happens. I don't know why you switched my kilt for trousers. As if it matters any more, Jazzer. I think I'd better go and see how Brad and Chelsea are getting on. I shouldn't really have left it to them to sort out. I think we're going to have to come clean and tell everyone we're not married. Not sure I can face that. We'll be a laughing stock. You two really do suit each other. What do you mean? Pair of miseries, that's what you are. Oh, here they come. Oh, you should have seen us. Chelsea was brilliant. You were at all. You should have seen their faces when Chelsea said they'd have to remove her by force if they didn't marry you both today. Oh, yeah. oh, I shouldn't have said that, Chelsea. You could have got yourself arrested. They were terrified of her. Good girl. Did they do anything? Uh, no. So we're still not getting married. Brad sorted it, though. Good man, Brad. I asked to look at all the other bookings within a 30-mile radius and calculated that there was enough time for the registrar in Felpersham to drive here and back and still be in time for another appointment at the end of the day. You say someone's got some gumption round here. Our Brad's always been the clever one. Well, they started going on about needing to make sure they had breaks in between for health and safety reasons. <laughs> this is the good bit. But I said they won't be able to have any breaks when they've lost their jobs after I put this all over social media. What? So you two can get married? At 4.30 this afternoon. <laughs> oh, I'm working at the dairy then. But it can definitely fit us in. Brad even took into account the maximum travel time in heavy traffic, so they had to say yes. Oh, my two <laughs> clever kids. Amazing. It is. Well done, Brad Chelsea. 
But I've already changed my shift with Clary, and Ellen's not coming in today for family reasons. It's okay, Susan. I'd love you to be here, but you've already done so much, and the main thing is we just get it over and done with. Oh, that's not very romantic, Tracy. Stuff romance. We just need to make this official. Yeah, in six hours' time. You will need two witnesses. They've got me and Chelsea. Oh, I see what you mean, Susan. Well, I don't. Brad's under 18. Oh, Brad! It's not my fault. The only thing I can do is ask Clary, except she might get suspicious. We can't give up now. Oh, who cares? Your sister only gets married once. Clary will just have to cover for me. We're getting you two wed today and that's that. Right, come on, Brad, let's go and get some food. No, oh, no, you don't. No, your mum's right. What, we can't get something to eat. No one's leaving here until these two are officially married. Are you going to hold us prisoners? No one moves until they call us into the room. <clears throat> what if I need the toilet? We may need something to eat in six hours. <sighs> I never had any breakfast. That's your own fault for oversleeping on your wedding day. Nobody, but nobody leaves. Ah, looks like you finished it. Oh, I couldn't put it down. Oh, I know. It's the way she immediately takes the reader into the narrative and intricately weaves the images of second sight. Yeah, the sisters have me hooked. But the way she introduces us to the husband's psychic abilities is genius. Is it? As he's preparing the slides for his restoration project in Venice. Restoration project? The way Du Maurier sets it up by having him see on the slide he's preparing for the mosaic what is about to happen to his daughter. The child's already died at the beginning. No, she hasn't. I... I thought you weren't working. I thought they was on holiday. No, no, he goes to Venice to work on restoring the church. But I've just read it. I'm sure they're on holiday. <sighs> well, people do interpret the written word very differently. If I can't even follow the story, I'll never pass my exam. Ah. <clears throat> I think I know how we might have got our wires crossed here. Might as well not bother applying. Emma, <clears throat> if I let you into a little secret... You must promise never to tell another living soul. I'm intrigued. I'll try not to. Oh, no, no. I need more from you than that. Because if this ever became public knowledge, my very respectability might be called into question. I promise. Well, I think in this instance, and I confess it has happened on more than one occasion, I watched the film adaptation rather than read the book. You never... Emma Grundy, can I trust you to take my secret to the grave? My lips are sealed. All right, we've gone. You can shut up, shop now. Jasper! <laughs> that registrar practically threw us out. I can't believe we waited over six hours just for that. I <laughs> thought we might have to call an ambulance, what with the speed at which he was going through those veins. <laughs> Did you see how red his face was? What about when I had to stop him to ask if he needed <laughs> some water? <laughs> and Chelsea, when you said you wanted to see a few words. I oh. thought he was going to explode. <laughs> what a job's worth. He should have let me, though. Are you all right, Brad? You look hot and bothered. Oh, it's this soup. <sighs> You're right. It's not the weather for velvet. You can blame your Auntie Susan for that. Oh. I was happy just to wear our normal clothes. And what would that have looked like in the photograph? What photograph? We don't have a wedding photographer. And I'm starving. I don't know why. How much of that coffee and walnut cake did you have? Well, there was already a big slice missing before we started. Well, it seemed more appropriate than the muffins which Emma also offered me. Yeah, worked a treat, cutting the cake before we got married. <laughs> What was it you wanted to say in there, Chelsea? Well, I found something on this website. You know, the one where it said spiders were good luck. Oh, I don't want to hear it if it says we're doomed. Um, yeah, so marry on a Monday for health, Tuesday for wealth, Wednesday the best day of all. Oh, that's lovely, isn't it, Jazza? Oh, it is. Thursday for crosses, Friday for losses, and Saturday for no luck at all. <laughs> It's a good job we didn't marry on Thursday last time, then. <laughs> now, come on, huddle together. Oh. You've got the confetti, Chelsea. Mm -hmm. You can't take a photograph. If anyone sees, they'll know we didn't get married before. No! Oh, you're not in it, Brad. Come on, you've got to squeeze up. Sorry. And I'm wearing trousers this time. OK, are you ready? <laughs> now, on three, chuck that confetti everywhere and shout, <laughs> Married! <laughs> ready? One... Two, three, Mary! <laughs> Pip, that's a lot of.
of ice cream you've got there, Rex? Oh, it's to keep a group of Cub Scouts cool coming to the rewilding site for a bug hunt. Mm, sounds fun. And they'll be counting worms. That always goes down a treat. I bet it's chaos. Uh, chaos, but good chaos. Yeah. Uh, how's Rosie getting on in Cornwall? Well, she sounds like she's having a brilliant time with her dad. Toby loves spending time with her. Yeah, yeah, I know he does. He, he does miss living with Rosie uh, and with you. Oh, OK. I, I know how hard it's been adjusting to not being with her full time. Yeah, it's been a big change for all of us, but we're getting used to it. And it, it, it's good to see him more settled. Yeah, yeah, it is. Hmm. Um, OK, uh, well, this was... Well, uh, I hope the Cub Scouts enjoy counting worms and eating ice cream. I, I think it's best not to rock the boat. Sorry? I'd hate to see Toby disrupted when he seems to be finally working out how to be happy. Yeah, as would I. It's just... Uh, sorry, Pip, I, I don't mean to interfere, but mm. he, he just seemed all over the place before he left for Cornwall. Yeah. Has Toby asked you to talk to me? N no, 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 but I am here... To look out for my little brother. But if there's something you want to say, then you'd better just say it. It is best to be straight with people. They know where they stand, then. I agree. You need to tread carefully around Toby. Look, right. As I said, I'm not trying to get involved. It doesn't sound like it. I just don't want to see him messed around. No, everything that needs to be said between me and Toby has been. Okay? Okay. Well, I just... I hope Toby heard you, that's all. He did. And if you stand here any longer, that ice cream will have melted. <laughs> yeah, right, OK. Um, well, uh, uh, I've said my piece, so I'll, I'll see you around. I don't understand. If it looks so nice and it's the cinnabar caterpillar's main food... And supports more than 40 other insect species... If it does all that, why... Are we pulling it up? Brad, you always want to know more. That's because you explain everything so well. I like it when you ask questions. I, I like asking you questions. And you always listen to everything that I say. I like listening to you. But, um, why are we pulling it up? Well, it can be poisonous, so Rex wants this corner by the public entrance cleared. But we're to leave the rest of it. Rex will be back soon, and he wants this whole patch cleared of ragwort, so less chatting, more pulling. Uh, uh, I thought I was going to choke on confetti yesterday. Auntie Susan was throwing it everywhere. <laughs> so, your mum and Jazz are finally married, then? Uh, legally married. And uh, did you wear that velvet suit again? Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> you looked hot in that. Oh, I was so hot in it. <laughs> I mean, we had to stay locked inside this boiling register office for six hours. Susan wouldn't let us leave. Oh, well, as long as they're happy, I suppose. I caught the bouquet. <laughs> well, it, it, it weren't a proper throw. Security came out and told us we had to get off the steps and Mum sort of tossed it in the air as we scarpered. I don't believe in marriage. Uh, no, neither do I. It's an outdated institution. Yeah, really outdated. <laughs> a way to try to control how people live their lives. Uh, yeah, I, I told them they didn't need to bother getting married. Did you? Uh, well... Because you uh, don't need a piece of paper to say that you love someone. Uh, no. But uh, Mum and Jazz will get on. Well, most of the time. Who needs to have a relationship sanctioned by government or a religious authority? <laughs> Not me. Or uh, no one really. No. I'm really pleased you had time for lunch. Mm, me too. Mm. It's a nice place. Well, I like to get out of Ambridge now and again. Oh, I needed to after the harvest. Mm. Brian is still looking over my shoulder. <laughs> Checking you don't bankrupt <laughs> the farm. So good to get out. <laughs> so, I wanted to say sorry again for how I've behaved recently. No, that's forgotten. Great. <laughs> I'm just glad we can still be friends. Look, that's just it, you see. I, um... I think I'd like to be more than friends. Pip. I've, I've had a lot of time to think this week with Rosie away. I know. I, I should probably think about heading back and, uh, to No, I've, I've just got to say this. If you'll just let me say this, please. We've already talked about it. I know, but I've been thinking a lot about it. About you. And about you and me. And about how I need to be clearer with people about how I feel. I, I think I need to just... No, please, can you just let me finish? Look, I know how I've behaved before... It was wrong. 
I was confused. You don't but... have to explain anything. It's, no, it's just, it's just... I can't stop thinking about you. Well, like you said, you're confused. No, I was, but now I'm not. Look, Pip... I... I, I'd really like to see where, it, it, you know, where we could go if we were more than friends. I'm flattered. <laughs> I can feel a book coming on. You're great, Pip. Lovely. Mm. But you need to find someone else to explore things with. You're, you're brilliant and, and funny and gorgeous, but I've already been there. N not with me, you haven't. But I have. I've, I've been with a woman who was exploring her feelings for the first time, and, and that experience has taught me that this won't go anywhere. You don't know that for certain. She wasn't me. I'm sorry, Pip. But I, I can't do this. We can't get him away from the worms. Have you bribed him with ice cream? Oh, I've tried that. He's getting upset when I tell him it's time to say goodbye to them. He looks like he's really into them. Hmm. I know it sounds a bit, well, weird, but he thinks he's got to protect them. From what? Well, the other boys. They got overexcited by the time we started counting them and were threatening to throw them at each other. He's inspecting every one of them to make sure they haven't been harmed. Oh, that's actually very sweet. Yeah, I know, but the group need to be setting off for home now. Mm -hmm. Being in a group can be hard sometimes. And the Scoutmaster says he's only just joined and he hasn't really settled in. Well, why don't you try and talk to him, Brad? Uh, me? Uh, yeah, I'm not very good at, well, talking and all that. No, I think you'd be great. Do you? It's OK if Brad tries, isn't it, Rex? Oh, if you think you can help. The Scoutmaster will stay nearby. What do you reckon, Brad? Uh, I can try, if, if you want me to. I think that would be great. And she told you in a text? Yeah. I was oh. waiting for her to turn up so we could sign the contract for the house. And you had no idea? We'd been celebrating the completion of the sale of my flat the last time we were together. Oh, that's brutal. Mm -hmm. I spent the next few months living out of a suitcase. That's why Ambridge and... Um, being settled as estate manager at Home Farm means a lot. Mm -hmm. Did you ever hear from her again? I stopped looking at her social media when she posted photos from her honeymoon to the man she'd been engaged to when we first met. Oh, God, that must have hurt. Yeah, it did. So I made a pact with myself that I wouldn't ever again get caught up with another woman who was exploring her sexuality. Yeah, I can see why. Good. So, friends then. <laughs> Always friends. Mm. But what you've told me doesn't change how I feel about you. Pip. I am flattered. But I'm not prepared to make the same mistake again. But what if it isn't a mistake this time? Pip, let's just leave this. I'm, m I'm making a right mess of this, aren't I? <laughs> I do appreciate you being so honest. Look, what if we just try a night out somewhere then? We can do that as friends. No, no, on a date, and see if there's anything there. We already know each other. <laughs> Coming on too strong, aren't I? Sorry. It's fine, Pip. I don't think I've actually asked anyone out before like this. <laughs> Always been asked, have you? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to hound you. If you still say you want to just be friends, then I'll, I'll, I'll back off. It's, I just had to make sure you knew how I feel. Oh, you were brilliant with him. Yeah, he was just very anxious about the worms. Oh, me is right, Brad. You were brilliant. See? <laughs> oh, I didn't do anything. Oh, well, you must have done something, because he wouldn't shut up about what a great time he'd had when his mum came to pick him up. I don't know what we'd have done without you, Brad. Nah, he just liked worms. No, he liked you. He'd have still been standing on his own if you hadn't saved the day. Nah, it was nothing. Well, uh, if you want, you can both finish up here now. Oh, but there's loads more to pull up. Oh, Kirsty thinks we should leave what's left now. We're happy to stay to the end of the day. Yeah, yeah, we can stay as long as you need us. Oh, I'm sure you've both got better things to do. Oh, the holidays are nearly over. Make the most of them. <laughs> and uh, thanks again for today, Brad. <laughs> See you, Rex. <laughs> Bye. It's a shame we can't pull up any more ragwort. <laughs> well, I weren't planning on getting home until later. If you want to do something? Uh, yes. That'd be nice. We could go for a walk or watch a film. Yeah, film sounds good to me. Oh, I can't believe the holidays are nearly over. And we've got to go back to college. I know. It's been a great summer. The best. 
Do you think things will be different once time starts? Different how? I don't know, just like not getting to do what we want all the time, seeing each other when we want. Maybe. You really were great with that boy. I used to be that nerdy kid. Sometimes I still think I am. I know it would have meant a lot to him, you know, making an effort like that. Nah, it, it were nothing. <laughs> you always say that, but it weren't. You're special, Brad. You know that? Coming! Oh, Stella. Hi. Uh, I, I was just passing. Right. Uh, great. Sorry, I, I didn't even think of my interrupting anything. Oh, no, no, not at all. I am, aren't I? You're not. I don't usually just knock on people's doors uninvited. It's a nice surprise. I used to take Weaver for his walk at this time. Right. And I, I haven't quite had the habit. That's, that's tough, Stella. Yeah. It'll take time. Honestly, it will. We'd always walk this way. <laughs> it's a lovely evening for a walk. Well, I, I just thought I'd, I'd say hello. I was, I was passing. I'm pleased you did. I bet you're enjoying the quiet, having the house to yourself. Yeah. It does feel a bit empty without Rosie, but um, I'm going to enjoy it because she'll be back soon. So. Now here's me ruining your rare night of peace and quiet. Uh, you're not ruining anything. I don't suppose you fancy coming out for a drink. I mean, I mean, you don't have to. Like a date. I've been thinking about what you said earlier, and. I can't really see the harm in going on a date. Well, um, I'm, I'm just finishing making something to eat. Ah, OK. Uh, well, I'll let you get back to no, it then. But the trouble with cooking for one when you're used to cooking for two all the time, like I am for Rosie, is that you always make so much more than you need. And... I can see how that might be a problem. It is, because the last thing I like doing is wasting food. Wasting food is mm. something we should all avoid. Exactly. So... If you haven't eaten, uh, you haven't eaten, have you? No, not yet, no. So if you haven't eaten, would you like to join me? Well, if it's not going to put you out. I'd really like you to join me. But I'd really like that as well. You better go in then. Are you sure I can't tempt you, Oliver? No, thank you, Linda. The tea room's finest lemon drizzle. Oh, well, go on, then. Splendid. <laughs> Ardil mentioned at breakfast that you'd be popping round this morning. A pleasure, as ever, but intriguing, nonetheless. Forgive my intrusion, but time is of the essence. Is it? With Grey Gables. Oh, I can see how it would be. And that's why I'm here. I should probably stop you right there, Oliver. I have already made my position very clear. Yes, and obviously that's very disappointing. But I do understand. And I remember Adil saying I would be unmanageable. Our proposal would involve you doing all the managing. Oh. Uh, I'm all ears. As you know, we have very ambitious plans for Grey Gables. I hope you do. And we want to make sure that the reopening is suitably marked with an event that fits the new vision we have for the hotel. And I can help how? Our plans include a grand ball the scale of which has never been seen at Grey Gables. And we want to ensure that the planning for such an event is in the safest of hands. Well, events of that scale need to be organised down to the very last detail, with all eventualities prepared for. Exactly. I can tell that you and I are on the same page. Well, I shall gladly accept the invitation to attend when it is delivered, in due course. We were very much hoping the invitation would come from you. Oliver, I have made myself very clear that I will not be working at Grey Gables again. I'm flattered by your persistence, of course. And we very much hope that you would accept the invitation to manage the whole event for us. Well, that would involve organising catering, marketing, entertainment, front of house, media, VIPs. I knew you were the one for the job. Oh, those events come with a very high price tag. Oh, there'll be a significant budget. Oh, dear. The word budget upsets me already. There will be no expense spared. We want people to be talking about the grand ball for a long time afterwards. And I rarely negotiate my fee. Exactly as I would expect. When is it? Now, that would be a useful piece of information to have, wouldn't it? 
I'm afraid I won't be able to begin preparations without it. So you accept our offer? As long as the dates don't clash with any prior commitments, then gladly. Morning. Hmm. Hey. Eh? I don't usually <clears throat> sleep this late. No, I didn't want to wake you. Well, you should have. Well, I've made coffee. Oh, thanks. It was lovely you stayed last night. <laughs> lovely. I'm so pleased. Mm. So am I. It was fun. It was. You do know that people will start to talk if we're both late for work. <laughs> Mum said she'd cover milking this morning so I could have a bit of a lie-in. Oh, that's mm -hmm. good of her. I know. It's because my human alarm clock, a.k.a. Rosie, is away. <laughs> but tongues might wag if you're late. Let them. Um, I'd really like to... Um, and I'm hoping that after last night you feel the same, but... I'd like to do this again. I'd like that as well. Just see where things go. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, let's see what happens. Hmm. You make good coffee. But I was going to bring you breakfast in bed. Oh. <laughs> Is that your front door? Oh, no, my parents have got a key. Oh, OK, this might be a bit awkward. I'm quick, out the back. Uh, sorry? Uh, but please, just until they're gone. You want me to hide outside? There would need to be someone helping guests park their cars when they arrive as well. Uh, make them feel special from the very first moment, eh? Exactly my thinking. Mm. Linda, Oliver, this is a surprise. Mm, we meet again so soon after breakfast. Indeed. I thought you were meeting with Linda at Ambridge Hall, Oliver, to avoid the noise of the contractors. It all sounds very quiet. It isn't usually like this. Maybe something's wrong. Linda has most graciously accepted our offer to organise the grand reopening ball. Subject to dates and fee being agreed. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, we're not quite ready to confirm the specifics. Well, that's why Linda's come to see you, to try to move forward with the details. And for the inspection. Inspection? Uh, Linda's going to take a tour of Grey Gables to begin her event planning. You could show her around. <laughs> I think you're forgetting I know Grey Gables like the back of my hand, Oliver. But I'm sure it has changed out of all recognition. So, Ardival's assistance would be greatly appreciated. I have some very pressing issues I need to attend to. So perhaps we could postpone the inspection? Oh, I don't think we should delay. I'll need to send invitations out very soon. Well, then I'll, I'll leave you both to it and go and find out why the building work seems to have stopped. Mm. We're hoping for November, but we haven't fixed on a date yet, Linda. And is there a reason for that? It's just not at the top of my to-do list. Well, I would appreciate you bumping it up the pecking order. I can't possibly get started without having a date. We'll see if we can confirm shortly. <sighs> that is one advantage of us living in the same house, isn't it, Ardell? We'll be able to discuss arrangements out of office hours, as these things often need attending to around the clock. <sighs> of course, Linda. Hmm. Entertainment will be a key feature of this event, as will catering. And it's always best to be clear about dress code, but of course I'm assuming it will be a black tie event. Well, if you just want I to... I wonder if we should really open up the different rooms as well, have a feature or event pop up in places that people won't be expecting. Oliver and I were really just thinking about the refurbished ballroom and combine it with a good deal on room rates. Oh, well, in that case, you might just as well get a band and offer a bit of supper. No idea. What you need is an event. It's just that I don't want to leave it until your dad gets back. Well, I am sure it can wait half an hour. He's gone to farm supply, so he'll be ages. And if it is mistakes... Look, if you think it is, you should call Alistair. I'm not interrupting anything, am I? Uh, is that why your door was locked? No. No, you're not interrupting anything. I didn't even think you might have someone here. I, I haven't got anyone here. Um, that's good, then. But if you're pretty sure it is mastitis... I'm really sorry to have to ask. I know how rare it is for you to have any free time, mm. but I'm just not sure. Look, it really is best to call Alistair. Well, well, don't you remember? Last time it turned out to be nothing. Mm -hmm. So I thought I'd get a second opinion before calling him. Mm. Save him having a wasted journey. It's always better to get a diagnosis quickly so you can start treatment. Well, would you mind just having a look before I do? OK. Yeah, I'll be over once I'm dressed and put these things away. 
Have you had any breakfast? I was just going to make some. I'll make your breakfast and you can go and get dressed. Uh, look, I can make my own breakfast, Mum, and then I'll be over. I'll clear up then. I can clear uh, up here. OK. I'll be over as soon as I can. Right. Well, make sure you don't forget to put that other mug in the dishwasher when you tidy up. And we could consider utilising the other sweets. If that doesn't mean incurring additional costs. Oh, costs. Honestly, Adil, you can't be short-sighted with these things. Remember, this is your grand reopening. You want oomph, you want sparkle, so that people walk away talking of nothing but how wonderful Grey Gables is and how no expense was spared. Linda, as ever, you are right. So once you've gathered your thoughts and put some ideas down on paper, we can see what will be possible. Well, it does look a little bare still. Are you sure you'll be ready to open? It's all in hand. And this MDF looks rather shoddy. Is that in hand as well? All is in hand, Linda. Mm. How are we getting on? Oh, Oliver. <laughs> I was just telling Ardil that the ballroom still looks a little bare at this late stage in the refurbishment and just a little shoddy. Linda is going to put some ideas on paper and then we can see where we can go from there. Mm. I'll get started then, <laughs> once we've sorted out my fee. Oh, of course, Linda. Uh, and thank you. My pleasure. I'll see you at home, Ardil. Yes. I fear Linda's observations of things looking a bit behind schedule may well be accurate. I've just been inspecting the bedrooms and some of them haven't even had their bathrooms fitted. Do we really think we can open this place in eight weeks? Now, is there anything I need to be aware of? Honestly, Oliver, it's all in hand. Well, the contractor I spoke to said there'd been a number of delays. Were you aware of these? As I said... All is in hand. These big projects always look like they're running late. And then suddenly, ta-da, and it's all ready. It will all be fine. However, I am a little confused about the brief Linda seems to be working with. Where is the confusion? She talked about a fee. Well, how is that confusing? I didn't think we would be offering her one. Oh, don't be ridiculous. You can't engage people's services and not pay them. I was under the impression that we were asking Linda because of her reputation for organising community events. You really expected her to do it for nothing? Isn't that why we chose her? This is a commercial venture, rooted in the community, of course. But what message does it send out if we don't pay people? I think we will have to rein in some of her plans. Why ever would we do that? Is there a problem I should know about, Ardil? Any financial concerns? Problems with contractors I need to be made aware of? Everything is in hand, Oliver. Well, I very much hope it is, because I've got a lot invested in Grey Gables being a triumphant success. Stella? Oh, I'm in the middle of something. I just thought I'd drop your jacket off. You left it at mine this morning. Mum coming in sort of ruined the mood. I still can't believe she just let herself in. I, there really is no privacy in my family. Just leave it there, thanks. <laughs> It's great to finally see the drill getting ready for action. I need to concentrate here, Pip, so just leave the jacket there, yeah? yeah. I bet it feels good to start using it. If I get this wrong, Pip... Can you imagine? Thanks again for bringing my jacket. Yeah. Is that oilseed rape in that hopper? Yeah. And Egyptian clover in the other? It is. So what's the third one again? I know you said last night... Look, I don't have time to give you a lesson, Pip. Have I done anything? Sorry? To upset you? Just really busy. I thought we had a good time last night. Yeah, as you can see, I've got a lot on. OK, but I've got the feeling I've done something to upset you. <laughs> and you really don't know what that might be. I know I panicked when Mum came round. Just shove me outside, oh. Pip. Do you know how wrong that is on so many levels? No, I'm, I'm sorry I upset you. Thanks for the jacket. And last night was good, but that's going to be the last time. I wasn't hiding you away. Weren't you? No, of course not. But please don't think that's what I was doing. So what were you doing? Well... I thought you'd be embarrassed if Mum just walked in and found you there as well. You're such good friends. I thought it, it might be really awkward for you too. I mean, I mean, it is a bit complicated. Yeah. Which is why it's best to stop it now. I thought we had something here. Well, I did too. But hiding me away just isn't going to end well, is it? <laughs> 